This is Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog. Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog is Baton Rouge's longest running and best television show. Who would have believed that? Sports 225 is brought to you by Breck. Remember, it all starts at Breck. Now, your host, Lee finds one. <laughs> oh, my. Well, like always, some of the best things you never hear on Sports 225 are set off the air. As we begin the show tonight, I'll tell you that uh, I got to Baton Rouge in 1984, and I was fortunate enough to immediately become the Southern University beat writer for The Advocate, which was then The Morning Advocate. And I covered football and basketball. And we got to the spring. I got to hang out with Roger Cador, who was then, were you the first year Southern baseball coach in 1985 that spring? That's right. Wow. Probably a young guy, probably made a bunch of mistakes, but had fun through it all. <laughs> oh, and nobody ever did more with less than Roger Cador as the coach. And he retired last year. This is his first year in retirement. And when I saw him before we started taping the show, we hadn't seen, we hadn't seen you. I hadn't seen you in a few months at right. least, if not yeah. longer. I said, damn, you look good because you just look relaxed and fit. And that's what retirement will do for you. Yeah, it should. And in my situation, that's what I've done. I've just, I didn't want to be in a situation where I couldn't walk away. And I know some coaches can't walk away afraid. I was looking forward to it. And, um, uh, so things have worked out rel relatively well for me. Pretty good for a kid from New Roads who uh, has seen the world because of mostly baseball and all yeah. the people you know. Yeah, and making friends. I mean, I've never met, met a stranger, and it's ironic. It's so good that you don't meet strangers. Yeah. Well, that is true. You could put this man in an empty room, and he could have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But uh, we, we hit it off good. And God, we're think, I'm thinking it's almost 34 years ago, you know, when I first met you. Well, and it seemed at like Southern University, so when I started, and I, I'm, I think I actually, I got the year wrong, because 1985 was a national sports festival, and it was That's the right. next year. So 85 football season, 85, 86 basketball, and then the 86 baseball season, which was your second season. So in 1986, the uh, Southern University football coach, or 85, was Otis Washington. Mm -hmm. And that was the year that the USFL folded, and Doug Williams was in between teams, mm -hmm. and he ended up being a volunteer assistant for the football team that year. He That's was a, right. He, he could throw a nice pass. Mm -hmm. And then um, Bob... Uh, Bennett? No, no. Who, well, Bob Bennett was on staff, and the, the, ba the basketball coach... Hopkins. Bob Hopkins was, in his, as it turned out to be his last year, as the basketball coach. And young Roger Cador was the second-year baseball coach. And I remember we had a lot of fun that season. And then you got on a great run because you were getting some kids. You I had began. a lot of kids back in the 80s who ended yeah. up going to pro baseball, not necessarily major right. leagues, but guys yeah. who went on. Yeah, uh, I, I had a bonanza recruiting year in 85 mm -hmm. because, I, you know, being hired in August, I couldn't recruit. So I played with what we had, and then I went out and signed some really good players. I was all over the place. And uh, then 86, I signed some kid. I had some good runs, and then we won. We beat Cal State Fullerton in 87 yep. with those kids in 85 who were sophomores because I signed them 85, and they played 86, and 87 were their second year. So they beat Cal State Fullerton. And uh, you could tell we were on the That right. was down in New Orleans. Yeah. And I can't, I can't remember the kid's name, but I, I want to say you, you had a relief pitcher who started that game. Al Ratliff. Yep. And I remember, was he the one from Bogalusa? Bogalusa. I said to him one time, they had a break coming up. I said, you going to go home or what are you going to do for the break? He looked at me and said, I'm from Bogalusa. I'm staying here. <laughs> yeah, he was the guy that, you know, I let him talk to the media and he, he did his Muhammad Ali invitation. He said, you give me two runs and I'll beat him. Wow, man, why is, what is this guy talking about? Well, he hadn't started all year, been a reliever. Started me, pitched nine in, and then we gave him one run, and uh, we beat Cal State Fullerton. You know what was so strange in that game? 
I think Cal State Fullerton only hit three or four ground balls. All of the rest were strikeouts or fly balls. Wow. You know, back in the day when you had the six team regionals and pitching, pitching depth became so big a part of the equation, the smaller schools like yours never had enough pitchers. Right. So even though you won that game, you know, you still had to come back around and do it more. In today's format, where they have the four and then the four, Southern University baseball might have gone farther, even yeah. though you always got, you were always the low seed, you know, and the team from the SWAC or whatever, the smaller schools around the country always got put in the, the, giant, the lion's den. But you might, you might have been, been better. Yeah, we had some really good players uh, in the 80s and 90s. I mean, uh, I mean, I must really say, because again, a lot of black kids were playing baseball and they were still coming to the, uh, the historical black schools. And uh, I was all over the place. I was in Chicago, Detroit, Atlanta, Houston, California. Yep. I mean, Florida. I literally, the one state I had a fence around was uh, Atlanta. I had, I literally had put a fence around Atlanta. Every good kid came out of there, I got them. But something happened with travel ball. When travel ball came, I knew my days as a coach was going to be diminished because uh, uh, something, a phenomenon happened. The coaches tricked the parents. They paid the money. They gave them high hope that their kids would now all go to big, big schools. And that was the end of schools like Southern to a large extent. Because even brothers of kids, the, their older brothers played for me, but couldn't get the younger kids. Wow. Yeah, even well, the parents had flipped over. Well, but you did some interesting things. We've got to take a break, but I want to, you were a pioneer in a couple ways. Yeah. Um, and we'll get to that as soon as we get back. He's uh, Roger Kador, the retired Southern University baseball coach. I'm Lee Feinstein, Business Sports. Hi, I'm the human dislike button. You may recognize me as the guy who enforces rules at Breck Parks. Check out my amazing presentation. Did you know? Motorized vehicles are not allowed in Breck Parks. Sales and solicitation are prohibited without permission from Breck. And my favorite rule, keep Breck Parks clean by placing all trash in trash cans. Come on, you can do this. For more information about these and other Breck rules, please visit breck.org slash HDB. Back on Sports 225, hanging out with Roger Kador, the retired Southern University baseball coach, who uh, earlier this year, LSU honored you at a home game. That was really cool. And, um, you, you know, every, just walking into Cox where a few people recognized you and wanted to talk to you. How's retirement, coach? <laughs> but uh, I want to get back to that subject that we were talking about in the last segment, how travel ball changed things for the teams that didn't have the wherewithal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me more about that. Yeah, it, it, it changed things because now, it gave, it gave a different uh, uh, attitude, as, I don't, and I'm maybe not using the right word, but it gave a different perspective to kids and parents that, ooh, travel ball, I play in these big fancy parks and go all over. No, nah, I don't want to go to a small school that doesn't have all of the necessities, you got me? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm doing it in travel ball. Right. And that made a huge difference. Oh, some of those complexes where the kids play, is way better than anything that you could ever put There forward. you go. So you know? it changed yeah. everything. And then, and if you talk to Paul Maneri and uh, Coach uh, Ro uh, Robichaud at UL, they'll tell you the same thing. It changed for them. The difference is kids pay to play, and they think they don't have to work as hard. Mm. That's the other thing. So it's really, and even in pro ball, the pro people are telling me that travel ball has changed the dynamic of the attitude of the kids there. Wow. So it's really, it hadn't been, as all the good that is done, it's done as much bad. Sort of like uh, uh, the internet, a lot of good, but it's done a lot of bad. <laughs> there so, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. So, but what you did, even as early as the 80s, but going into the 90s, was you tapped into a Central American market where nobody else was really doing that like you did. And then you were one of the first guys to get white guys to play at a historically black college. And now that's commonplace in the SWAC. Yeah. In fact, there are some teams in the SWAC where you, you, know, you see them play in some sports, um, you know, not football or basketball, but Olympic sports and baseball, where the roster just is mixed. That's right. You know, and uh, and you, you were one of the pioneers there. 
Well, I realized I had to do it. Uh, and, uh, you know, having played pro ball, and I understood things in a different uh, uh, arena than most people. Yeah. Most people were looking at things in a black and white arena. I was looking at it in a color arena. You know what I'm saying? With everybody in there. Right. And uh, so I decided to go into Central America and Latin America, get some players. And I was able to do that. And then I said, get some white kids. It's good. Diversity is good. Where the country was, was, was understanding the value of diversity. Certainly Southern University needed to have it because... Uh, when I look at our nursing school and our law school, it was extremely diverse. And uh, so I decided to do it in athletics, which gave much more attention to the university. And it worked out quite well because I signed some really good white players, Frazier Hall, Cody Hall. Cody Hall pitched in the big leagues. And that's the first white kid that ever played any sport at a, at a historical black school to make it to the big leagues. So Cody Hall, it became a part of history. And then we got Jose De Leon, a, a Latin American kid uh, from Puerto Rico who played in the big league. He was the first Latin American kid from a Swag school yeah. to play in the big league. So we became a lot of firsts in that Ricky Weeks, the first player from a historical black school or any school that signed to win the National College Player of the Year in the Golden Spikes Award. So we had a lot of firsts. And Southern was part of it, first team to win a game at the, uh, in the NCAA Regional, first team to win a playing game when you had a play. And so we did a lot of firsts. Ricky Weeks was the best player you ever had, probably. Well, we're going to give him that. Yeah, I had a lot of good ones. Of course, ones. he was the See, number. He was, I think he was the third pick overall, right? Second. Was he? Yeah. Michael Woods Jr. was probably as good as Ricky, but Ricky worked a little harder, and that's why Ricky did it. Uh, you know, I've had some really good players. I mean, but those two guys, in my opinion, were probably as good as uh, any player I've coached in that all. And they played on the same team. You know, I had a team in 2002 uh, where three players played in the big leagues, Ricky, DeWan Day, and Fred Lewis. Oh, they yeah. all Fred played Lewis in the played big with leagues. the Giants and did well. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But so, I, I forgot about DeWan. Yeah. So <laughs> those are the kind of stuff that – we were doing stuff at Southern that was far beyond right. what anybody else knew at the university. I don't even really think, I was speaking to a young lady the other day, Aaron, Aaron Fulbright, who does my Facebook page. And I said, Aaron, you know something? Someone had a long conversation with me and they told me, all the things you've done, where are the pictures? Well, we could, they wanted to do something to show what I'd done was remarkable in that it's remarkable in that it's never going to be done again, certainly in your lifetime or my lifetime. But when I look at how difficult it is and where sports is going, it's never going to be done again. Yeah. Hey. I mean, you know, just it's uh, I just wish Donna was alive so she could understand my drive because she kept saying you are unique in that when you start something, you never stop. And that's the only way I could do it because that's the way I was growing up, uh, raised, coming from that uh, place I came from, adventures and new roads, and you had to not quit. You had to keep going. Yeah, well, if I tell you, when we went to a Southern University baseball practice and you hung out, you knew that you were at a special place because the guys were always cool. It was always fun to get there, and it was always fun to talk to you. And, you know, and, and Roger would... Uh, just stop and come over and visit, which I always enjoyed. <laughs> uh, it made me feel good. All right, you make me feel good by being on the show. Hold that thought. Um, we'll take this break, and we'll be right back to Sports 225. Hi, I'm the human dislike button. You may recognize me as the rules guy for Breck Parks. Sometimes the rules slip past us. So I put together this amazing presentation. Did you know? Golf practice is only allowed at designated golf facilities. Firearms, explosives, and weapons are not allowed on Breck property. Metal detecting is allowed in some parks, but go to Breck's website to learn more about this and other park rules. For more information, visit breck.org slash HDB. <laughs> Skip would laugh. Yeah. 
Everybody will say. We're back on Sports 225. Roger Kador is with me. He was the Southern University baseball coach from 1985. Four. Four, 84 to 2017. Wow. This is his first year of retirement. Um, one of the things that really helped grow baseball, not only at Southern, but in Louisiana, was the relationship you had with Skip Bertman because he came and played you and yeah. vice versa. You know, yeah. there was a, it wasn't any of this, you know, I'm, uh, we're too big to go on over to uh, Southern University. They, did they ever play you at Pete Goldsby Field, though? Yes. They did. Ben McDonald pitched there. <laughs> Ben McDonald. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The first time I went to Pete Gold, Goldsby Field, and I haven't been there in a long time. Has it been fixed up at all? Because it's better now. The, the, so like, it it was unbelievable. The highlight of the games there were hoping that a ball didn't go through the holes in the fence in the outfield, like on a ground rule double, or uh, um, the guys selling concessions, and they weren't licensed concessionaires. There was yes, some sir. interesting stuff to be had at Pete Goldsby. Or someone Field. had to come through the center field fence to get somewhere because we were taking up their pathway you know and we have to stop sometime and let them do their journey i tell you that's the beauty that people you know people it's it's it had some history there in that you had to understand had some character character that these but, people live in the neighborhood we're taking up we come and play a game <laughs> This is their pathway to get home. No. So we stop and they pass and everything was good. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's true. It's true. I uh, know. Well, but then when you finally got the facility on campus, and I'll give you an analogy of one that's just, that reminds me so much of like, like it. At USC, they have this little pocket of land between the parking garage and, the, and Figueroa Street, and they turned that into a beach volleyball facility. And people go up on the... Uh, um, parking garage and look down and watch the beach volleyball. Just like sometimes you'll have fans who stay up on Harding Boulevard looking That's down at the, the baseball. The, the hump they call, yeah. I just think that is such a unique situation. I remember when we played LSU there, uh, Ricky Weeks Jr., a sophomore year, mm -hmm. and you, you, they had people as far as you could see on yeah. the hump. It was a sellout crowd, and it was just a great... But, you know, I've often argued with people at Southern, why don't we have a picture of this? It's never going to happen again. And you had an aerial photo. I, I, I said, we got to have a picture of this. Yeah. And, and I'm big because history. People are going to need to know something that happened exciting at Southern. Yeah. You see? And it's not just negative things that happen at Southern. A lot of good things, but we don't, we can't tell a story well, where people could understand. Yeah, with with all the budget problems and everything else, a lot of people graduate from there. That's right. And a lot of a lot of athletes have great experiences and life changing experiences that matter. But back to things. the question. So with Skip, yeah, you know, because he took over, I think maybe a year before you was it the same year? Yes, he did. Yeah, in '84, I think he came, or '83. He came in '83. Yeah. And I went and watched the game when they played Southern. Uh, first game I had gone to in quite some while. I had because you had been a, an assistant basketball coach. Right. People forget that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I went and watched the game at LSU, and and I was there was a guy Ulysses Jones who played with me. He coached at Southern High, and he kept saying, "Man, you you know stuff before it happened." I said, "Well, I could see it." I said, "That's the way I played when I played. I can't anticipate stuff." And, and let me say, just jump in here real quick. This, for those of you who don't know Roger or his history, uh, he played in the Braves organization. One of his dear friends is Henry Aaron. I mean, that'll take you, take you back and give you some perspective. So it wasn't like he just came out of basketball and became the baseball coach. But uh, what was it like meeting Skip the first time? And uh, I can Oof. imagine the two of you. Um, it was great. We talked about a lot of things, and we talked about community how important the community was for LSU and Southern and that we we the community was big enough. That was the one thing he said. It was big enough for both of us to thrive and be successful. And he was correct. And he started the Mayor's Cup and all of that. So a lot of good things came out of that very first meeting. Um, not too long ago, uh, Ronnie Rance and the uh, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame put on a deal where it was uh, Skip speaking with tech, former Texas coach Augie Garrido. Great night. And 
a guy, you know, Augie, who you knew well, and then terribly enough, a couple of weeks later, Augie died. Yes. And um, what a treasure he was, too. Oh, my goodness. Guy won almost 2,000 games. And uh, he remembered me because uh, 1987, New Orleans, you know, and he was asking, where's Roger? Where? You know, he wanted to see me. Mm -hmm. And That's we took good. pictures together, so we have, I mean, just a wonderful guy. You see, what... Augie went on and did a lot of stuff on the national level to help me right. after I beat him, where my team beat his team. Right. Yeah, that no, a lot Augie of people Garrido. wouldn't yeah. happen in football and basketball. Yeah. That would never happen. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and Augie Garrido was the Cal State Fullerton coach who later left there to go to Texas where he finished his career. Well, he went University of Illinois and then to Texas. Oh, that was, oh, yeah, yeah. And he had some unbelievable players at Fullerton, yeah, guys right. who, you know, yeah. went a long way. Yeah, yeah so... But that, that man helped me on the national level, but that's, that's the way baseball coaches are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the culture of the sport is great, and uh, this man is a perfect example of it. All right, we got one short segment left. Hold that thought. He's Roger Kador. I'm Lee Feinswag. It's Sports 225. <laughs> Someone forgot all neighborhood break parks close at dark. You want another? I think they'll pass. Amplified music and sound is prohibited without permission from Breck. No alcoholic beverages on Breck property. Smoking of tobacco products is not allowed. Use of fire is prohibited except in grills. Woo. Gotta remember, Breck wants you to have fun but in the right way. For more info, go to breck.org slash hdb. Coming down the home stretch of another Sports 225. I've been hanging out with Roger Kador. Remember to go to sports225.com to see when all the show listings are on Cox 4, which is your view, and CST. And remember that we archive all the old shows that you can access through sports225.com on our Sports 225 TV YouTube channel. <laughs> there you go. Um, do you, what do you see changing in college baseball over the next couple of decades as Major League Baseball's influence on it and television for every conference, almost every game is, you know, do you, or, or, or are we in a place where it's going to, you know, plateau and just be a good another minor league feeding system? Well, it will be a minor league feeding system, but they'll never had the kind of fun that I try to bring to the park. I don't like what I see. It's, it's, the fun is gone. They make it too rigid and... So corporate? Yeah, and nobody want to have fun. I just think when you, you're dealing with young people, put them in a fun environment, you, you're likely to get a little more out of them than if you make it too professional and too strangers. You sound like Crash Davis in Bull Durham. Yeah, I mean, but it's... I don't like what I see. I mean, I just don't see kids smiling, having fun. That's what baseball should be for amateurs. Mm -hmm. Professionals, right. you got me? It's different. Yeah. But amateurs have fun. And I had a lot of fun with my kids when I was coaching. Oh, you had a lot of fun with everybody. Well, I, mean, there, I you forgot know, that. Luckily, yeah. yeah, well, luckily. I'm having did. fun here. No, I, I appreciate it. Does this show have to end? Can we keep going? <laughs> <laughs> Only for another minute. <laughs> what, what was great was we always did have fun. Whatever it was, if it was on a road trip, um, you know, and uh, at practices, at games. You know, but I do blame you as I rehab my left shoulder <laughs> for an injury that I first got in 1987 covering his team in the SWAC tournament. I fell off my bicycle while I was riding <laughs> for a ride before the game. It goes all the way back to then, so, you know. Yeah, well, but no, that was a... Great memories, though, for yeah. your career. My, fortunately for me, you know, with you, but, yeah. I mean, so many other people, and you got to feel really good about right. that. I really do, and, Lee, I tell you, you were the first beat writer I had, and we had a lot of fun. I mean, you know, it wasn't... No matter if we won or lost, you knew you were going to get a good story. Always had a good quote <laughs> and a good interview. Roger Kadar from Ventress, Louisiana, up near New Roads, to Southern University, to the Atlanta Braves, back to Southern, enjoying retirement, and luckily my guest tonight on Sports 225. Thank you, sir. I enjoyed it so much. Lee, anytime. You got it. Thank you for watching. This has been Sports 225. Ed Cornwall Town.
Carolina by Baton Rouge Bay. That's the site of my story at Spanish Town Mardi Gras. Things can get blurry. See the mowers marching in. 